Juan Roman Brickelme is known for a lot of things. He's a three-time South American champion with Boca Juniors, was the last true number 10 when the position was virtually extinct, he's incredibly temperamental, and was the supposed heir to Maradona. But what I think gets understated is his time at Vail Real. Indeed, he wasn't just some Barcelona outcast playing for a subpar La Liga team, but was their talisman who led them to European glory. He was, for a brief period of time, the best midfielder in the world, playing for a mid-table club that was on the verge of relegation to the Segunda Division. So sit back and enjoy as we go through the chapter of Raquel May's career that gets so overlooked. When Roman was discarded from Barcelona to Villarreal out on loan in 2003, his career at the highest level looked to be over. Coach Louis van Gaal hated the Argentine, claiming that his signing was purely political. Because of his indifference towards the star athlete, van Gaal rarely played Raquel May. And when he did, he deployed him as a winger, which minimized his strengths and amplified his weaknesses. You see, Raquel May was a number 10, an attacker who operated in the spaces between the center midfield and the front line, with no pace or athleticism whatsoever. As a winger, pace was needed to beat La Liga defenders. In addition, playing as a winger slashed his output, since it gave the Argentine less time on the ball to work his magic. Raquel May was seen as a disappointment. When one fan asked if he was underrated, he replied that he wasn't because he wasn't anything special in the first place. This came as a shock considering he was perhaps one of the greatest players the Argentine game had ever seen. He was one of the most promising prospects in the 90s, winning the FIFA U20 World Cup, South American Youth Football Championships, and the Toulon Tournament, being crowned as the player of the tournament in the latter. For Boca Juniors, he was magnificent. In his last four seasons for Boca, he hit 44 goals and 68 assists in 194 games, contributing in crucial matches. Most notably in the 2000 Intercontinental Cup Final, where he put up one of his best ever performances, controlling the midfield single-handedly and setting up Martin Palermo's winner, making it a 2-1 win. Claude Makalele was the best defensive midfielder at the time, and Raquel May made him look like a fan who won a raffle to play for Real Madrid for a game. El Torero was included in the South American Team of the Year four times, was twice voted the Argentine Footballer of the Year, and was the South American Footballer of the Year. He led Boca to three Argentine Premier Division titles and two Copa Libertadores. So he was quite literally the best player in South America, but he had been reduced to nothing more than a flop and a rotation option at Barca. When Barcelona signed Ronaldinho, the club exceeded the maximum number of foreign players that Spanish teams were allowed, prompting Raquel May's two-year loan move to Villarreal. So this loan move to the Yellow Submarine became Raquel May's saving grace during that period, after a season of feeling unappreciated and underutilized. Villarreal were piss poor at the time of Raquel May's arrival. The season before, they had finished 15th in La Liga, with an atrocious negative 9 goal difference. But to say that Raquel May changed their form would be an understatement. Raquel May literally transformed the entire team in his image. Under Benito Floro, Raquel May was deputized in several attacking positions in his first season, but most notably as an attacking midfielder. With Marcus Senna playing just behind him, giving him defensive cover, Raquel May was given the freedom to push forward at will and dictate the tempo of play with little defensive responsibility. Players like Sonny Anderson provided an outlet for El Torero to playmake. As I mentioned before, Raquel May lacked any sort of athleticism, pace, or stamina. However, he didn't need it because he had the intelligence to let the ball do the work for him. Incredibly press resistant due to his technique, close control, and endless trickery. He made the best defenders look like amateurs. In addition, his intelligence, passing, vision, selflessness, and ability to orchestrate attacks made him a weapon against any team he faced. Raquel May's passing accuracy and his ability to control a game 
create spaces and chances for his teammates, and dictate play, as well as his football IQ, made the Argentine a fantastic playmaker, able to unlock any defense effortlessly. He always knew when and where to play the ball due to his flawless decision making. In essence, play to his strengths and he will win you matches on his own. At the start of the season, Villarreal's form was impressive, going unbeaten in their first six games in La Liga. That good form carried on into the UEFA Cup as well, where the yellow submarine beat Trabzonspor with the Argentine assisting two of Villarreal's goals in a 3-2 victory. Raquel May also scored a brace in a 2-0 win against Torpedo Moscow. However, their form from October onwards was inconsistent to say the least, winning just 9 of their next 21 games. After losing 4 in his last 5 games, Flora was sacked in late February and replaced by former Spanish international Paquito. Under the Spaniard, the Yellow Submarine experienced mixed form once again, but he was able to steer the club to a respectable 8th place finish in La Liga, with Raquel May ending the season with 8 goals. In the UEFA Cup, meanwhile, Veyreal masterminded impressive wins over Turkish club Galatasaray, with the Argentine scoring in the first leg and contributing to all of Veyreal's goals in the second leg, sending them to the last 16. A sloppy win against Tati's Roma and a comfortable victory against Larsen Celtic ensured their place in the semi-final against La Liga rivals Valencia. Los Che were a fantastic team under Rafa Benitez, having been crowned as La Liga winners that season. While it was a hard-fought contest, a penalty conversion from Mista sealed Valencia's spot in the final, crushing Villarreal fans' hearts. However, all was not lost. Over the summer, the Yellow Submarine brought in Chilean manager Manuel Pellegrini, who would change their fortunes. Villarreal went into the 2004 Intertoto Cup in tremendous form beating Odense, Spartak Moscow, and Hamburg to meet Atletico Madrid in the final. Raquel May, back from an underwhelming 2004 Copa America with Argentina, was ready for the final. And in the second leg, he was an integral player, playing the full 90 minutes plus 30 minutes of extra time, and even converted the winning penalty to see Villarreal crowned as Intertoto Cup winners. This was Villarreal's third trophy in the club's history, and the first trophy, exceeding their 2003 win, in over 30 years. To further improve the squad, Uruguayan striker Diego Forlan was brought in from Manchester United. Apart from a few memorable moments, Forlan struggled at Old Trafford, so he came in with a point to prove. Together, Forlan and Raquel May would form a deadly duo, directly contributing to 65% of Vareya's goals in La Liga that season. Deputized in his preferred enganche role in the 2004-05 season, Raquel May and Forlan took a bit of time to adapt to the new season, but when they did, the South American duo was unplayable, able to rip teams apart effortlessly. Despite patchy form in the fall, from December onwards, they were a force to be reckoned with, only losing four in their last 24 games. A run which included 4-0 demolitions to Real Sociedad and Getafe, as well as 4-1 thrashings of Espanyol and Levante. Raquel May himself was electric, even going on a run where he contributed 9 goals in 8 games, which included a hat-trick in a 3-1 slamming of Valencia, and 2 assists in a 3-0 hammering against eventual La Liga winners Barcelona. Real would place third ahead of Sevilla, Atletico Madrid, and Valencia. Pellegrini's side scored the third most goals in La Liga and qualified for the UCL, establishing Real as the best team in Spain, behind Real and Barcelona. El Torero was voted the most artistic player by Marca, was gifted the La Liga Don Ballon Award, given to the best foreign player that season, and placed 14th in the Ballon d'Or rankings. What made it more spectacular was the fact that he was the only player nominated that wasn't playing for an established super club. He finished ahead of legends like Balak, Buffon, and Zidane, the best players in the world at the time. There were calls for optimism that the Yellow Submarine could go even further and challenge Europe's elite. However, the Spanish side would have to contend with Champions League football, along with numerous cup competitions and a grueling 38-game league season. 
In the summer of 2005, Raquel May was signed to Villarreal on a permanent deal and was expected to lead the club to glory. In La Liga, their form at the start was less than ideal, picking up two points from their opening four games. However, a run from mid-September to early January, where they only lost one game, saw that they stayed in title contention. Raquel May was back to his best, picking up nine goal contributions during that time. Unfortunately, mixed form from late January onwards saw their title hopes slip away, having to be content with a 7th place finish. El Torero finished the league campaign with 12 goals and 2 assists in 25 matches, making him Villarreal's top scorer. Thrown in a group containing French giants Lille, two-time European Cup winners Benfica, and a dominant Manchester United side under Alex Ferguson, hope seemed lost. Crucial wins against the Eagles and the Northmen, and a horrible showing by the Red Devils saw Villarreal finish first in their group. However, draws with Manchester United and Lille kept some optimism, and with El Torero's equalizer against Benfica in a 1-1 draw, qualification to the knockouts seemed like a possibility. They overcame Rangers on goal difference in the round of 16 with Raquel May scoring the 8th minute opening goal against the Gears. In the quarterfinals, they faced Italian behemoths Inter Milan, but overcame them on goal difference once again. Roman utterly dominated the midfield with his immaculate display of skill. He made the Inter Milan squad look like buffoons as he danced around them effortlessly, even assisting the equalizing goal that sent them through to the semifinals. Villarreal was pitted against Arsenal in the semifinals. The Spanish side was unfortunate to lose 1-0 in London, now needing two goals to reach their first European final. But the match was in a complete stalemate for 88 minutes until Arsenal fullback Gael Clichy brought down Jose Mari in the penalty box. Raquel May stepped up to take the game into extra time and salvage hope for the La Liga side. Fans' hearts were broken as Jens Lehmann saved the Argentines' penalty. When the match ended, Raquel May walked off the field in devastation. The yellow submarine was brought back down to earth, where not even the heir to Maradona could take the La Liga minnows to the heights of Champions League glory. Eventually, clashes with the board, poor form, and excessive demands saw Raquel May dropped by Pellegrini. El Torero was sent to former club Boca Juniors on a six-month loan deal and signed on a permanent not long after, a shameful and disappointing way to end his time with the Yellow Submarine. Since Raquel May left, Villarreal would continue to be a force in La Liga until their relegation in 2012. They have since been a top club in Spain and even won the Europa League in 2021. Raquel May would end up winning his third Copa Libertadores with Boca while out on loan, along with two more league titles. He would make another 194 appearances for the Blue and Golds before making a romantic return to Argentinos Jr., where he retired in 2015. He is currently the president of Boca, the club that he holds most dear in his heart. It's said that Raquel May's lack of work rate, inconsistency, temperament, clashes with managers, and playing style, respective to the era he played in, hurt his career and prevented him from reaching that next level. While true that may be, his three and a half year stay at the Estadio de la Ceramica was peak Raquel May, where he became arguably the best midfielder in the world. He was talismanic, contributing when it mattered most, and making the best defenders in the world look like third stringers. And I don't care what you say, the way he lifted a small club, fighting relegation, and made them into one of the best teams in Europe couldn't be matched by any player of any era.